This is our planet, the Earth. It's unique in the solar system, perhaps even in the universe. My name's Ian Stewart, and I want to show you how our planet works. In this series, I'm exploring the four powerful forces that have worked together to create our world. Wow. Volcanoes. The oceans. Ice. But this week, it's the atmosphere. The most finely balanced of all the forces. But the one that has the greatest power over our lives. It's easy to take the air we breathe for granted. It's invisible. But we depend on it completely. The atmosphere creates our climate and protects us against the cold hostility of space. And it provides oxygen to fuel our bodies. But now, our atmosphere is changing. My God! With potentially devastating consequences. Our atmosphere is full of contradictions. It's immensely powerful and yet it's incredibly sensitive. It's destructive. And at the same time, it protects us. It's essential for all life, and yet it was created by life. Without it, the planet would be utterly uninhabitable. I've come to South Africa for something very special. A personal tour of the atmosphere. The air above us is made up of many layers. And this is my chance to see what they do. I'm going to take a ride on a jet, and not just any jet. This one is one of the fastest planes on the planet. And more importantly, it flies high, very high. This plane is an English electric lightning, a legend from the 1960s. And South Africa is one of the few places where they're still flying. My pilot today is Dave Stock. You're going to feel like you're stuck under the front of a missile. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't know if I like that or not. Part of me likes it, <laughs> part of me terrifies me. Yeah. Look at that. The last of the great Cold War fighters. If the canopy does not open, things like that you really don't want to read, really. How's that helmet? Uh, it feels nice. Yeah, absolutely. We humans are perfectly adapted to survive at ground level, where the air has all the right conditions for life. It's the right temperature, the right pressure, and it's got the right mix of gases. Down here there's plenty of oxygen about, but after about three kilometres, the air is so thin that there's not enough oxygen to breathe. So. If you didn't have this mask, you'd slip into unconsciousness. I better put it on. So I'm going to continue the approach. Driving formation of boarding. Continue the approach, coming with you. Oh, this is great.
going upside down. Unbelievable. Runway heading 150, lightning flash. It's beautiful, the, the, the clouds are just stunning the way they're wrapped the way around the uh, Table Mountain. The atmosphere that surrounds our planet is made up of four key layers, each very different. Although I'm above the clouds, I'm still at the very bottom, in a layer called the troposphere. It's a narrow band, usually little more than 10 kilometers thick. The troposphere is a rich soup of warm, moist, oxygen-rich air. It's unstable, chaotic and unpredictable, but life depends upon it. And in just a couple of minutes, I'll be leaving it behind. So this is the height that Jumbo Jets cruise. Oh yeah. Oh. I'm now at 40,000 feet above the Earth. That's about 12 kilometers. The pressure is less than 20% of what it is in the ground, and the temperature is about minus 60 degrees centigrade. Just a bit of air, and that low pressure would mean that my body fluids would boil. I'm dead in seconds, so I'm pretty glad to be in here. Okay, you ready to go supersonic? Okay, okay, here we go. We're about to go supersonic. We are approaching 45,000 feet and we're about to cross an invisible boundary in the atmosphere. We're leaving behind the first layer, the troposphere and entering the stratosphere. A very different place. Here, the air is stable and exceptionally dry, so there's virtually no weather. The stratosphere is home to the ozone layer, which reduces the amount of lethal solar radiation reaching the Earth. We've reached 50,000 feet, or 15 kilometers. Nearly 90% of the gases that make up the atmosphere are below me. Absolutely nothing above me. Black sky. Black sky, well, dark blue. Yeah. This is the highest I've ever been. But the atmosphere stretches on high above me. It gradually fades away into space, which is another 85 kilometers above my head. This is as high as this plane can take me. The return to Earth is even quicker than the journey up. Although my return to reality takes a little longer. Ah, terra firma, eh? Fantastic. It looks different from here. Oh, yes. But almost 50 years ago, one man went much, much higher than me, and he experienced the atmosphere in a completely different way. On August the 16th, 1960, long before man had set foot on the moon, military pilot Joe Kittinger took a solo journey to the edge of space.
not in a rocket, but in a giant helium balloon. He reached 31 kilometers, high into the stratosphere. That's twice the height that I reached. Then, Kittinger did something astonishing. He jumped. This is the actual moment. He fell to Earth, reaching a speed of almost 1,000 kilometers an hour. And yet he could feel absolutely nothing. I had no ripple of the, of the fabric, uh, my pressure suit, and I, I, it was a very weird sensation.